Welcome back to episode six of the Pixelmator Pro Masterclass. Today is the last episode of what I've been calling the Masterclass for Photographers, where we've been going through the entire color adjustments panel and talking about all of the things that you can do to fine tune and really enhance your photos. Now, if you've made it this far in the series and you found it useful, I'd really appreciate it if you at least subscribed or considered supporting me as a member on YouTube. Your $1 a month is what makes it possible for me to take time away from my job and my family to make these videos for you. Let's jump into today's photo. Now, this is a photo that I recently took of the Northern Lights. If you look at what it started as, you can see there's a lot of work that needs to be done to make this photo great. The way that we're going to approach this is with the Levels tool. Now, if you don't have the Levels tool enabled, you can come down here to Customize and you can find the Levels tool and just make sure it's turned on. At first look, the Levels tool might be very intimidating. So instead of just diving right into the photo, I'm gonna start by showing you how this tool actually works in practice. So as you can see with my sample gradient here, I've got two different gradients on the top and bottom. On the top, we've got one that goes all the way from black to white. And on the other, we have one that goes from black to middle gray. And you can actually see these different bands represented in the Levels tool. The way that I like to use the Levels tool is with these little arrows down along the bottom. And what they allow you to do is to determine where you want the brightest point in your photo to be. So as you can see, this gradient only goes to middle gray, and so this top band ends right here in the middle. But what I can do is I can grab this and I can just slide this all the way over until that middle gray now becomes white. You can also see that I can grab this middle here if I want to readjust that and get these colors more closely aligned. And I even have these fine adjustment tools so that I can try and get these matched up even better. Now, I'm not perfect, but hopefully that gets you an idea of what you can do to remap the exposure of a photo if it's way under or way overexposed. So let me reset this. The other way I can use the Levels tool is by using these little eyedroppers. So if I just come up here and click on the right eyedropper and click on my rightmost band, you can see that it resets it to be the brightest point. And because these were nice even gradients, it automatically matched my middle gradient as well. And if you have a photo that let's say the brights don't go all the way to bright and the darks don't go all the way to dark, you can use all three of these tools to match the dark middle values and the brights. Let me reset this one more time. The other thing that you might find useful is that you can adjust specifically the red, green, and blue channels or just the luminance. So with the luminance, you can do the same thing where you can drag these around and just affect the luminance of your photo. But usually I find it easier to work directly with RGB. Now you could also do this with your reds, green, and blues also, but I found it pretty rare that you ever need to get to that level of detail and usually keep it right here at the default. So let's jump back over here to my photo. If you look at the levels, you can see that everything right here is all stacked in the dark values. None of it is up here in the lights. And so what I can do is I can drag this middle value here and get something like that. And I could, if I wanted to, really remap the brights all the way down to here. But that makes it look way too bright for a night sky. So I'm actually gonna leave the lights in place and I'm gonna use this rather than trying to go for something that completely fills out the range of luminance, get something that actually looks nice and lets the colors come out. And so you can see the difference with the levels on and the levels off is pretty much night and day, especially for this type of nighttime long exposure photography. Now, the other thing that you'll notice is that the clouds got significantly brighter when I did this. You can also use this to tune and bring back in contrast if there's areas where you wanted the contrast to stay. So let's go something like that. So that might be too much contrast, so I'm just gonna tune it back and forth a little bit until I get a little bit of contrast in the clouds, but not too much saturation. And you can see now I've got something that actually makes the Northern Lights stand out. And now with that, let's take a look at the channel mixer. Now the channel mixer is also equally hard to understand just on its own. So let me show you this isolated document where we can play with it. If I hold the option key, you can see this is pure red. That's 255 in that first number is pure red, 255 in that second number is pure green, and 255 in that third number it's pure blue, and then each of these is a mix. So this is a mix between green and blue. This is a mix between 
red and green. Now what the channel mixer allows me to do is to take my green colors, so this middle number, and remove some of that green or add some other color to that green. So for example, if I start pulling out this green all the way down to zero even, you can see that now that the green is completely removed, that turns this into red and that turns this into blue and that turns this into black with zeros on all three numbers down at the bottom. And you can do this for all of the channels. So you can take down some of your blue, but you can also do interesting things like introducing more green to your blues. And that can end up in some interesting results. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know anybody outside of maybe like astrophotography that actually makes use of the channel mixer. So if you would like a tutorial on channel mixing and astrophotography, let me know in the comments below. Other than that, I've never used the channel mixer outside of just sliding these around a little bit to see if I can get some interesting results. Now, it just so happens one of the areas where you can get interesting results is photos that have a lot of saturated colors like this. So one thing that you might consider doing is taking your reds and pulling them down. And that's pretty darn cool right there. You get these deep purples instead of these really vibrant reds and pinks. So I dig something like that. And you can play with all of these. So I might even consider taking my blues and reintroducing a little bit of red to those blues. And so I'm pushing this more into this purpley color. And so you can see a pretty cool transformation from the original colors to something like that. Now, the last step for this photo is brightening up the subject, which is the car. And so I'm just going to introduce a color adjustments layer. And now if I click on the original layer and option click on the select subject, you can see that it will create a mask for me, which I can then drag up here. And I can play with my color adjustments to bring back some of the exposure and maybe playing with the curves a little, but just enough that we get some of those contour lines across the top of the car. And voila, that's our finished photo. All done with levels, channel mixer, AI masking tool, and a little bit of contrast from the curves. All right, that's it for the color adjustments panel in Pixelmator Pro. If you're a photographer, stick around because all of the other tools are going to be useful to you too. And if you're a YouTuber or videographer or graphic designer, you'll also definitely want to stick around because that's where the rest of Pixelmator Pro's tools really start to shine. Okay, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.